Hey guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are here for the movie Welcome to Marwin. So, I have a bit of a history with this movie. I've never seen it, to just to preface with that, but I saw the trailer. I think I saw it on a YouTube ad, surprisingly enough. Usually YouTube ads I don't give a crap about, but maybe I saw Steve Carell right away, and I was like, oh, what's this? And I ended up staying and watching the ad, and it was one of the trailers. I think it was the trailer number two. And there was something about the trailer that just, like, impacted me. And I was like, I need to see this movie. And this movie came out in 2018, and I'm pretty sure I saw the ad around the time that it came out. And I just never managed to get around to watch it. But I, I watched the trailer, like, over and over again. And then over the years of it being out, I would see the trailer again uh, just because I'd think of it, you know? I'd remember that that moment of seeing that trailer and I'd watch the trailer again. And, you know, I just never got around to doing the movie. And now, you know, here I am doing reactions. And today I was like, I think I'm gonna do a movie tonight. I'm kind of in the mood for a movie. And I was like, which one do I want to do? I was going to start John Wick because I've never seen the John Wick movies, and I will do those eventually. Uh, but I decided to go with this one. I remembered about it. I went and watched the trailer again. I went and showed my mom the trailer uh, just because I wanted her to see it. And I think I might have showed it to her before because she was like, oh, I think I've seen this, you know. Um, but anyway, that's kind of a little bit of my history with this movie. So I've seen the trailer a bunch so, you know, whatever it shows in that, I do know about because I've seen it so many times. But first order of business before we get talking a little bit more and getting started here, uh, I do full length timer based reactions for those of you who may not know, which means that you guys need to have your own version of the movie and you need to sync up with me. I'll put like 15, uh, usually movies I do a little bit longer. Um, sometime in the beginning where you'll see a little bit of the movie in the corner but that's only to help you guys sync up with my copy. And I'll also do a five, four, three, two, one countdown go. Um, so it'll only be like 30 seconds of it in the corner that you'll see. And then the rest of it, you'll have to have synced up watching with me. Um, I do it to avoid copyright issues and videos being taken down constantly due to copyright laws and, and all that. And the benefit for you guys is that you get to watch the entire thing with me, not just the, you know, like a lot of reactors do 10, 20 minutes, you know, sometimes a little bit longer when it comes to movies of highlights on the channel where you get to watch, but you'll get to see the full movie alongside me. So I know it can be a little annoying. I apologize if any of you guys are hearing that and you're like, oh no, I'm out. I don't, I don't have a copy of the movie. Sorry about that. But, uh, but that's how I do things here, just so you guys know before we get too deep into this. But, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm just really excited for this movie. It looks like Steve Carell does a really good job. He's an amazing actor. I love The Office and, and you know, 40-Year-Old Virgin. I actually saw before I saw The Office and, you know, a bunch of different stuff that he's been in. I, I quite enjoy. And, you know, this is based off a true story. And... Even if it wasn't based off a true story, I think it was going to hit me in the feels anyway. But just based off the trailer, I know I'm going to get hit in the feels. You might see a little bit of waterworks. We'll see. I know just by the trailer got me a bit emotional. And I think it does add something knowing that it is based off a true story. That, you know, that there are monsters in this world that would do this to a person, you know, just for no reason. I, that's just one of the things they mentioned in the trailer. So I, I know about it. Um... But it's going to be so much more visceral seeing it when we start here. So, yeah, buckle up, guys. It's it's a long one. I think it looks like it's like an hour and 55 minutes is what this is saying so far. Um, and so I do have some snacks. I have some popcorn I made. Um, and then I have some water. And I have a coffee that I will be sipping on. An iced coffee. Um, so make sure you guys get your some snacks before we get started here. Obviously, you guys could pause and resync in the middle of the movie or whatnot, but I cannot. I am stuck here for the whole thing. So um, make sure you guys just have some stuff with you too. So yeah, let, let's sit down and enjoy a movie together, guys, shall we? All right, we're gonna start here in five, four, three, two, one, now.
universal. <laughs> I am gonna turn it up a tad. Don't worry, it won't affect you guys at all. Just my end. Dream works, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've seen the, the little guy fishing off the moon. Dream works. You know, before this gets started, I'm going to clean my glasses. Probably something I should have done before we got started, but you know, I'm not very clever and I don't think of these things until after I start. But don't worry, I can still kind of see. <laughs> it's like almost my screen is almost in that range of like being able to kind of see, but not really. Welcome to Marwin. I really like the idea of like using art as healing too, based on a true story. Yep. I saw that in the trailer. I saw there's also a book about this guy's story as well. It's uh Mar Welcome to Marwin Cull, I believe, or something like that. He's going down! They actually did such a good job with, like... It's almost hard to tell whether that's the doll Steve Carell or... I think it is. He looks very glossy. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is now. Okay. Through the glass, it was a little harder to tell. This is really cool. I might get the book after this. I think there's a bunch of pictures in the book of, like, the real, you know. Like, who this is based on and the actual stuff he worked on and everything. Frilly under things. <laughs> He's wearing them. <laughs> I guess he doesn't have shoes, right? Oh, man. Can't be easy to wear heel. Not bad at all. <laughs> I don't speak Nazi. This is really cool.
Like, the idea of recreating some of this... They're gonna see his shoes. <laughs> from a cinema standpoint and from like a like the actual project obviously I know it didn't move like this but like using like dolls and stuff to recreate some of these events and everything. It's really cool. Oh shit. Oh damn. Backup has arrived, I guess. Jesus. I like the way they, like, they're actually real and moving until they fall and die, and then they're, like, stationary, and they seem more more like dolls. It's really cool. Bunch of badass women! Hi, Wendy. Oh, nice. Oh, damn cars. So is this after the fact? It's really cool. Does he do stop motion too? Or does he just do like different like series of shots kind of thing? I wonder. I mean, I think that's supposed to, like, kind of portray that it might be stop-motion-ish based off the fact that it's animated in the movie kind of thing. The movie isn't done in stop-motion, right? It's, like, CG and stuff, I think. I'm not good at that kind of stuff, so I can't tell. I'll look up some facts and stuff after after we're done. Uh it's if it's stop motion it's like incredibly fluid, so I don't think it is, but I don't want to discount the possibility. Look at all the different, like, setups and environments. Oh, whoa, that's cool. Interesting. Why well, have that as a way to get in here? Is it to keep it safe? Like, why not have another part of the house have, like, a door? Oh, 
Well, I guess it does lead to inside the house. He just has a a way in from the outside. I guess that's a soldier thing to do. Rest in peace. This one's all high and mighty. Deja. How do you spell Deja, I wonder? Excuse me. I don't know if you guys heard that. Kind of a little involuntary burp. I'm gonna guess how you spell it. I remember her from the trailer, so she's a neighbor. I wasn't sure who she was to him. Man. I will say... If you were to see, like... If you were to see what he does in his spare time, you know? Oh, shit. Nicole. <laughs> he does seem like a dick. All right, who is she? Nurse? Oh, taking care? Some kind of company that... Ah. So he was fixing an earlier part in his installation kind of thing? Mark Hogan Camp, that's the name of the guy that the story is based off of, I believe. You need meat for bones! I love this lady. What was her name? I think he said Anna, but I'm not sure. She is a tall lady. 
or Steve Carell is a short man, I'm not sure. So uh, someone he knew during recovery. It's cool. Oh, that's awesome. I loved that. That was really neat. Oh, man. Even that just hits me, guys. Damn. I've never had to go through, like, a physical therapy like that. Wow. Damn. It's, like, very sad, but beautiful. I think I was married. Yeah, he, he doesn't remember things from before. <sighs> Shit. He even puts some... Oh, shit. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mark Hogan camp. <laughs> She's dripping. The ruined stocking. The women of Marlin. <laughs> Damn. All right. Oh shit, Nazi scumbag. Is this the same one from before? Did he live? Maybe it's just a different one. Ha <laughs> ha. 
It's spilled milk everywhere still. Whoa. Whoa, no. Interesting. Who is the hand? I mean, I think that that might have been Deja, right? Jesus. Nice. Oh, <laughs> the Wilhelm scream kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know if she's surviving that one. Yep. Deja. This is a wild part of it. Hmm. What? Damn. What a badass. He best not move his feet. What? So that's what happened to Wendy, too. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, like, the... Like, what Deja is supposed to mean. Like, assuming there's some kind of, like, symbolism to it. But I guess it's not a traditional story being sh- oh shit! That's cool. She's like peeking in. That is awesome. And like seeing it, getting like the shot in the mirror. It's just artistic genius. You're only supposed to take one! Did he just take three of them? Damn. Uh, 
Oh, shit. Man, the effect of this looks, like the tracers and everything going through the house, it being at night, it's so cool. And the tracers are smaller than they'd normally be because they're like, they're dolls, you know? But just like the impact of it is the big thing, yeah. This is in the trailer. <clears throat> the neighbor. Could hear him. <laughs> oh man that was I was like torn between like visually really cool way to represent what's going on in his mind but also on the other side just extremely emotional you know I wonder if Deja is someone in his life, right? Maybe someone that was kind of like that for him, like... It's really interesting because... Oh, this is really cool, him walking through it like that. Um, huh. jumping Jack the second she gets out of bed. Um, what was I saying? Shoot. Oh, I lost what I was saying. Crap. Ah, oh, cool. Oh. The way they're formatting this, like, you don't even fully know. Like, the, you see, like, the there was, like, the... I don't want to call it a scrapbook, because that doesn't feel like it does it justice, but... Where it has, like, the newspaper document of, like, local men attacked... And stuff, so you get kind of an idea. And, like, used to be married. But if you didn't see the trailer to know that he was attacked, lost his memories, stuff like that. Okay. As I say that, Wendy... Damn. Hmm. That's her. One of the other women of Marwan. So she knows about Marwin. Oh. 
I really like the transition through photos into Marwin. Shit! Oh, that was a cool transition. So he works at the place he was attacked? Did that happen after or before the attack? Or did he just help out around like the small town that they live in? Sorry for the bottle crinkling. <laughs> Oh, she is dedicated. That's like, he was given all the hints of like, no, I don't really want to, but she was not going to let him leave. Was this girl on Walking Dead in uh, Exandria or whatever it was called? Maybe not. Maybe that's not her. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the neighbor. the guy. Shit, man. Uh. Man, they can really stay in that. I was, like, so scared that they were just gonna fall out. Yeah, he took off. Ah, uh, buddy. I just want to help him. Hmm. 
is Deja supposed to represent maybe like the interesting like the fact that she's whisking away women that seem to be getting close to him like I wonder if she's just kind of representing the people in his life leaving him you know like Wendy was the one that found him but now she moved on and, and left and stuff and she was whisked away by Deja right Well, you found him. Or he found you. <laughs> what? Oh shit! He's got a whip! Huh! <laughs> Again? I swear I've seen her somewhere, though. It's gonna be tough. He had a hard time seeing it on TV, let alone... Oh shit. Well, she is now in Marwin. Well, Nicole. She, she now knows where the name came from. Hmm. Awkward. I was waiting for her to ask. I was like, I expected it sooner. Oh, I'm glad she's here to help explain. I don't remember her name, though. Have they said her name yet? Not Nicole, the other her.
<laughs> she seems nice. I'm really glad that he has, like, a lot of accepting people around him, too. Like, it's it's certainly tragic what, what he, you know, what he went through. But the fact that he has all these people around him that seem to care about him, they don't seem to judge him. Because I feel like a first impression from Nicole could have gone much differently than that, right? I'm gonna try to see if I can find the name because I think I might have missed it and I don't want to not know it throughout the whole movie. <laughs> Roberta I think her name is not Nicole, sorry, but the the girl that works at the shop, the hobby shop. So concerned. Oh. I love this so much. <laughs> That's right, her top came off. <laughs> the noise. Ugh. 
No oh, shit. Well, she just joined in fast. Did Roberta, Roberta find a time to put a shirt on? <laughs> she did, okay. These guys must not know the women of Arwen. <laughs> oh shit! That's awesome! Uh oh. <laughs> Damn. Mm. The over the top killing. I was just kind of thinking about it because it struck me as a little odd in the beginning. And I think it might be something where it's, like, Mark's urge to get revenge on the people that hurt him kind of thing or something, you know? Where, like, anyone that might hurt him now just gets over the top killed just to, like, make sure that they can't come back to hurt him kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, huh? Like Deja. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> that was a good delivery. I was violent, but at least the Nazis are dead. He has those on again. I love the transitions of going, like, back and forth between it just being, like, the dolls of him taking pi pictures and them, like, you know, moving and dancing and everything. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
That's actually really clever. Hmm. About the trial coming up. <sighs> Mark, gotta confront it, buddy. The, uh, oh, I had something on my mind before that. What was it? Oh. He talked about not being able to afford that other Nazi doll, so he probably doesn't have a lot of money to constantly buy, like, new dolls. So he has to reuse some of them. And then he frames that with Deja bringing them back to life. That's, that's cool. <clears throat> And I did thought, like, some of those Nazis did look like the same Nazis we saw in the field with Wendy that did get killed, but that makes sense now that Deja is bringing them back to life. Oh, fucking shit. He doesn't need you in his life. Oh, no. Don't run over the women of Marwen, no! He's gonna do it, isn't he? He bumped it a little. Did he damage it at all, I wonder? This is going to be someone that does not understand. Yeah, he's going to think it's weird. Well... That explains why she's not as weirded out by what Mark does, right? Because her brother collects stilettos and... she knows. Damn. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah. Oh, fuck. 
such a delivery. Oh, man. Steve Carell's delivery on that, like, kicking every memory and, like, his voice, like, shuddered a little bit. Like, it was hard for him to talk about it, too. You know? Oh, that actually has got my eyes watering a little bit. That was incredible. <clears throat> Seems like she has uh, some stuff going on, too. What's a tea house for? Under one woof. That's cute. Kurt is going to be here. Yep. This guy. Oh, Mark. Oh, shit. Oh. That couldn't have felt good. <clears throat> Oh, uh, is that him outside the, yeah. All the notes everywhere to like remind him to do different things too is, they never really address it, but just some little things like that. I've noticed them throughout the movie, but I didn't say anything until now.
they showed a couple scenes of him in court, unfortunately, in the trailer, so... I think that scene is gonna break me. Just off the couple things he said in the trailer. Interesting having the focus on Deja. Jeez, man. Kind of why Mark is in in Marwin. Mark is a little bit more of like a macho, like maybe to kind of overcompensate. Good job, Mark. Fuck yeah. Doesn't even care, like, usually you'd hide that kind of thing to, like... Try to make yourself seem more appealing to the judge. But he, like, raises his sleeves. Oh, shit. Uh, Mark... What is he doing in... I'm worried about what's happening in... Like, actually to him. You know? Like, what does this look like to everyone else? Oh, uh, did he run out? He just ran out. Oh, damn. <clears throat> Couldn't have just given him 20 minutes? He came out here.
What are we watching? Aha. Uh -huh. The same day as his art show. Oh my god. I just feel so bad for him, man. I just want to... I know I said it before. I just want to help him in some way. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Popcorn kernel went down the wrong way a little bit. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. <clears throat> I wonder if Nicole can help. Oh, they had it on TV. Well, not surprised. <clears throat> Some dolls or something? Mm. Shoes. That's my second thought, shoes. <laughs> I wasn't sure she somehow had like dolls or something from when she was a kid or something. It's really interesting having Deja the focus when it comes to like it it happened when the the lawyer was in, right? someone threatening to potentially, I mean, the lawyer wasn't threatening to hurt him, but Oh shit. <sighs> Fuck. Hmm. Oh. Yeah.
<laughs> She's like, I'm gonna stop looking at this now. Jeez. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Hmm. Interesting. So the only person that we know of so far that isn't based off someone is Deja. <laughs> That's funny. Deja didn't show up. Oh shit! That was weird. What? <laughs> it just comes running in. <clears throat> All right. It was like something flickered, like something like opened and closed on my computer briefly. Like kind of, I don't know what it was. I'm always paranoid I'm going to lose a reaction to my computer, like, restarting or something on me. While I'm, like, mid-recording, that would suck. Interesting, okay. Yeah, 
Yeah. It's pretty cool. Oh, shit. Damn. Interesting. I know they're trying to ship, like, Nicole and Mark, but... I feel, I mean, obviously I think Roberta likes, uh, likes Mark, right? Oh, the tea house. Nice. <clears throat> Is that the first time we've seen him without the hat on? Um, back with that art installation, or not installation, sorry, the, his art journal from when he used to draw, I thought that was going to be the same one that has the stuff about, like, the article and the, the stuff of him, like, talking about kind of killing himself and, and stuff like that. That's why I thought, that's why I was like, oh, when she grabbed it and, like, Asked to look at it. I think she's a little weirded out. I'm worried. Oh, Mark. Be careful, buddy. Yeah. Oh, Mark. Buddy, come on. She's being so good about it, though.
Yeah, I think he... He kind of creates these realities with the dolls that he thinks are... He grows a, a closer connection than what he thinks is really there, right? Kind of misinterprets it as a little more real than it should be <clears throat> interpreted. Maybe. <clears throat> you know, he has this whole connection where he created his side and her side and what they both say to each other and it's kind of like what there's actually some people that feel that way about famous people when they watch them a lot they feel like they really know them and they grow those connections there's a uh there's a name for it but i can't remember oh shit That's actually crazy. If th if that's actually there, that's actually crazy. That he did he do that without realizing that. Did he leave? He did. Oh, Mark. Huh! That's cool. Kind of like a Back to the Future reference kind of thing, having a car be the time machine. <clears throat> oh, did she get him the World War II soldier? The one he couldn't afford? Oh, man. Yeah, I think Deja is supposed to represent kind of like that. I don't know how best to put it into words, but... The side of him that kind of sabotages stuff, kind of, or, you know... Yeah. You know. Jeez. Oh, Mark. Come on, man. Deja might also represent, like, confrontation, too. Having to confront, uh... Shit. Having to confront the lawyer and what happened to him. And it focuses on Deja. A confrontation with, uh... Nicole and it focused on her again. Even when he was planning, like, the wed wedding shots, having Deja in the background of the camera shot kind of thing is also kind of like having her represent confrontation even within the image of the proposal kind of thing. I 
and killing her out of Marwin already. Oh, fuck. We're going back to this. Ah. Uh, fucking assholes. Jesus. <clears throat> Also, the fact that he lost his past, but Deja sends people to the future. It's interesting, too. Get out of here, Deja. No, it's not. Oh, man. Well, buddy. I'd love if she knocks at the door right now. And just the doll wakes up. Sorry, but that was almost done the popcorn I wanted to hammer it out. No more popcorn. Now we focus on movie. Our pain is our rocket fuel. I really like that line. No, 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 buddy, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Not the answer. Come on. Oh, shit. The head backwards is creepy. Nicole, I hope Nicole comes over. Mm. 
이제 Where'd he go? Oh shit! Nice! <laughs> Stab him with the heel. <laughs> oh shit! Damn! Uh oh. Shit! Hey, the women of Marwin! Oh shit, no, that is not! <laughs> you know what the the dolls especially like the the enemies coming back over and over and over again, it's it's also got to do with, like, the, the mental trauma, the PTSD of, of that night haunting him, never going away. They just keep coming back to life for him. brilliant uh oh oh okay that's probably a good thing These fucks just keep coming back to life! He does not even seem any close at all to reaching. Oh, shit. She has a Nazi tattoo. <clears throat> well, shit. The same tattoo the guy has. Hmm. 
Oh. The blue hair, the blue pills. Could Deja also represent the the medicine that he takes? She also handed him the medicine before, too. The timer being, like, the timer for when he's supposed to take his pills. Interesting. I think that's what the timer was meant for, right? Wow. That's a really cool effect. Oh, was that her moving or him moving her? Oh shit. The power of the shoes. Cool. Yes! Oh, that's awesome. Fuck yeah, Mark. Let's go. Go to the court, go to your show. Rip. Yeah, so I think, based off the course of this, I think it answered my question about stop motion. It, it wasn't. It's just the pictures of different moments to tell the story. Which I think is better than trying to do, like, stop motion. Please go, Mark. What did he leave her?
so-called people. Are a couple of them, like, breaking up? Oh, so happy. So happy through threw the pills away. Whew, that was a powerful scene. <clears throat> My eyes, someone's cutting onions! Cool. Oh, this is what I was hoping for. Seeing a bunch of the shots from, uh... Some things we didn't see. But also some things we saw throughout the the movie in, you know, just picture form portrayed. It's really cool. <laughs> no. Marwin Cole. Adding Nicole in. Interesting. Okay, that's the name of the book, right? Welcome to Marwin Cole. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what he sent to her. She's here. Hell yeah. Come on, Nicole. Uh, I can't, you can't ask her to feel the same way if she doesn't, you know, but I'm glad she stopped by. Hmm. Oh.
Uh, I mean, definitely throughout the movie, it seems like she liked him. Hell yeah, man, own it. Same outfit from the art installation. I like to believe that those are the shoes he was wearing at the art installation, too. Oh, this is the... That's awesome. Wow, so he still does it? Oh, that's awesome. Grown to over 200. Nice. <clears throat> that's freaking awesome. What a great movie. It's like... When stories like this are, you know, like... It's easy for me to be like, oh... when when I, I guess what I'm trying to say is when a movie isn't based off, like, a true story, you know? It's easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, yeah they did a good job portraying, like, a good story here, right? But when you know the story is based off, like, a... A true story right like someone's actual life where this this happened to them where they were you know beaten to within an inch of their life lost a lot of their memories and or all of them their memories you know can't draw the way they used to so they find another way to show and portray their art you know their their imagination the beauty they want to display to the world it's like just hearing the story, knowing it's a true story, makes it makes it way more emotional for me because it's not just something someone wrote and made up, you know. And then seeing that at the end of of the actual mark, you know, and uh, and the actual hoagie and everything, like it, it's just really cool. Like I said, it makes me want to buy the book. I heard the book has a lot of, like, the actual... I, I believe, anyway. Um, the book has a lot of the actual art that he does, you know? And I'm sure there's somewhere online or somewhere that I can uh, see a lot of his art. They said that it's shown, you know, all over the country and everything. And and that's really cool. Like, what what we saw in the movie, I know, was, like, an imitation of it. But even that was really cool, seeing all those different shots. Like, I I really loved how, you know, he he had a lot of the shots with uh, Deja in the background and, and all that. That was really cool. But kind of just going through the character, you know, the character's trauma. And I knew that, like, a lot of what we were seeing in Marwin is, you know, a way for him to heal and express what's happened to him and how it's affected him so like going through and trying to like draw these different connections between like i said like the the nazis that are coming back to life over and over again are kind of like the you know the the people that did what they you know that that beat him to within an inch of his life coming back to haunt him over and over through his ptsd and um, the realization later on that I didn't put together earlier on is that I think Deja represents kind of the the past, but also, like, I mean, the pills, but also kind of, like, the past and stuff. Like, I don't think Deja is fully represented by the pills, because I don't think it was, like, the pills that were causing, like, his PTSD and stuff like that. Um, but... But I, I, I really like the metaphor of kind of having the the pills be Deja, the thing that's holding him back, the thing that's stopping him from moving forward and that's ruining everything that's getting close to him, you know, and that was that was really cool. And then to have him just be like, no, I'm done, like having the fistful of him where I thought he was going to end it for a second there, you know, just take a fistful of him and and be done with everything because he was talking about you know being lonely and everything but then being like no you know like kind of having his vision of deja being 
a spy and being against him made him realize that everything is, you know, everything she said to him, that whispering those nothings in his ear and everything were all, you know, were all bad to, to manipulate him and everything. And just like him flushing or, you know, putting the pills down the sink and everything. Oh, I'm so happy. And I'm glad, like, I'm glad it ended with him kind of, you know, I'm sure what's happened to him is still going to haunt him. His life is still, you know, I don't want to say his life is ruined because like he said in court, he has a lot of friends and a lot of people around him. He can't do some of the things that he could do before, and he doesn't remember some of the things that, or, you know, he doesn't remember the things that existed before, but, you know, I don't want to say that it ruined his life, because going, because he can go forward from here, you know, and, and make new memories and new experiences that he can enjoy, so, but, man... I knew, like, just based off the trailer, I knew there were going to be a couple scenes that, um, that were going to hit me hard, and for sure, the first one that hit me pretty hard was the, the one where he was talking about all the memories being beaten out of his head for the first time and everything, um, I think he said that to Nicole and stuff, and the way that he said it, and... Like, the way that his voice was, like, Steve Carell did a very good job there with how uh, he sounded and being, uh, what's it called? Oh, what am I trying to say? I just lost my train of thought. Um, the way, like, his voice, like, cracked when he said it was just so well done, like, it... It, it hit me hard, like, my eyes started watering up at that scene, and then obviously, um, the court scene of him, you know, talking about these people and, and knowing they're gone and that he's gonna be okay, it was kind of like a, it was kind of like a happy sad, right, because him, like, hearing him be able to say that he's, he's gonna be okay was, was really good, and then we got to see him go to the art installation and, you know, seeing all the people enjoying the things that he's created, you know. Oh, man. The movie's just so well done. But, uh, I also, that is it, by the way, guys, for the movie. The credits are now, I sat through the credits just in case there was anything after, but there wasn't. So that's, that's all of it. But, but yeah, I mean, the... The way they portrayed it in a movie format with the the dolls coming to life, but I like that they didn't make it too they didn't they, they didn't make it too real, you know? They they still had like the doll antics. I, I also I was based off the trailer, I thought it was all gonna be like I knew the women of Marwin, like obviously like that was in the trailer too, so like just the the bits of that, knowing that going in, I guess I kind of should have known that it was going to be a little bit different, you know? It wasn't going to be... Because obviously I knew it had, like, the World War II aesthetic and everything, um, where I thought it was going to be more, like, serious fights with, like, the art installation and everything, but it was a little bit more uh, theatrical with the women of Marwin and then having, like, the time travel stuff, having Deja... And, and stuff like that, we kind of had some more, like, fantasy elements coming into it. Or, or not fantasy, but, like, uh, what's the word I'm, well, I guess some, some fantasy, but, like, just more, like, fantastical things rather than just, like, straight-up serious World War II, like, art show, right? So, and, and I kind of liked it because it also allowed them to, you know, even at one point, Hoagie, like, referred to himself as a doll. We had the one guy pull his arm off to be able to reach something. We had Hoagie turn his head all the way around. It was able to do, like, little things that kept it, like, 
fun and interesting rather than just, you know, these dolls killing Nazis over and over. And it made it way more artistic and creative. It makes me really wonder, like, I wonder how much of this was, like, did did he really have a character like Deja um, in the real art installation, you know, that, that Mark actually made in real life? Um, was that a part of it or was that like a theatrical thing that they decided to do for the movie? Um, but, uh... But yeah, it was it was it was just really well done having the the characters like come to life and move rather than just having like the pictures and the the transitions between like it going from the dolls like doing their thing like that dancing scene and then it transitions to like the snap of the photo and and everything goes still and it it's Mark there you know taking pictures of what he had like set up and everything and. I mean, like they said during the movie, it's so well detailed and everything. Like, especially some of those shots, like, with all the stuff on the walls inside, like, the bar and and everything. Um, it's just so detailed and so cool. I, I love it. And, I mean, being completely honest, if if I never knew anything about this movie, right? And you told me that, like, some guy you know, takes pictures of dolls in a World War II environment kind of thing, and that's his art. I'm not a big artistic person, so I think I'd judge it, you know? Um, I wouldn't, I would never judge it to his face, you know? Um, but being completely honest, I mean, I have to be honest, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's cool, I really want to see that stuff, you know? I'd be like, okay, Dolls, World War II, cool, you know? Um, and then just kind of move on with my life. But, you know, seeing it portrayed like this, it, it makes me want to go and see that art. I think it's really cool in, like, the level of detail and, you know, knowing the knowing the history of the creator and everything, I think adds so much more to it, especially how he used to be like a great artist but he's he's not able to do that anymore because of what happened to him and now i mean he's still a great artist it's just his art has taken a different form and and that's just that's just really cool um i did want to i did want to look up oh i guess i, I talked about it a bit during the movie but the aggressive killing also being kind of like what felt to me anyway, like a metaphor for, you know, like these, the Nazis are the representation of what has been done to him, right? So obviously anyone that would, you know, you, fan you probably fantasize quite often about getting revenge and taking it out on the people who harmed you, right? And when you imagine that, I feel like I would, at least me, would imagine it to be way more over the top than what, you know, maybe I'd normally do. Well, I wouldn't, I would never really take revenge on someone in, in the first place. But the fact that it's over the top killing as like, you know, where they just like mow someone down and they're like, they just take like 50 bullets to their chest kind of thing and then fall over. I think it's just representing like, Mark's desire for these people to pay for what they've done to him kind of thing. And that's like the over the top killing is kind of the, uh, the extent that Mark wishes that they could get what's coming to them. But then by the end of the movie, I mean, we don't, we don't know. And I don't think we need to know, you know, how long of a sentence those guys got, but, um, but even Mark said, like, regardless of, of how much time you give them, I'll be okay, and I'll know that they're gone and can't hurt me anymore, you know? So that was that was really impactful, too. Um, I wonder if I can find any kind of... Um, any kind of, like, facts or cool, cool info um, online here real fast before we before we start to wrap things up. Uh, welcome to Marwin Facts. 
Let's see here. Um, see, I don't know if I want questions. Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to... Trying to find something here. I think Wikipedia sometimes has, uh... Has, like, a little, like, trivia kind of section, doesn't it? Usually towards the end. Um... Well, maybe it doesn't for this one. Okay, well. I'm apparently very bad at finding information. I don't do it very often where I look up, like, cool info kind of thing. Um... Trivia? Go away, ads. Okay, so the dolls were portrayed via motion capture by their respective actors and actresses. That makes sense. Um, so it's not it's not stop motion, but it's um, I believe if I, if I'm not mistaken, motion capture is like if you've ever seen them where they wear like the um, little like round things kind of thing and then uh and then they're able to use that motion capture and uh kind of capture their motion <laughs> it didn't really matter of explaining that <coughs> excuse me but uh but yeah it's kind of like the same way i mean they do it for a lot of things these days like if you see any like video games like uh what is it? It's, uh, oh, the, the Jedi Survivor series that has the, I can't remember his name, but the, the kid that played Joker from, um, Gotham, and he's been in a few other things too, obviously, uh, but they did that and they have, like, shots of him actually in the studio doing some of, like, the motion capture stuff, some of the moves and, and everything, so that's, that's cool. <clears throat> it makes sense that they do it that way too. Um, in the first scene of the movie, as Captain Hoagie is in flight and calling over the radio, he uses the call sign Foxtrot Uniform Charlie Kilo, a way to use, oh, F-U-C-K, I see, a way to use profanity using NATO phonetic alphabet. That's cool. I didn't, I didn't see that. Um... So the person upon whom the film is based, Mark Hogan Camp, was physically assaulted on April 8th, 2000, suffering injuries to every part of his body. Hogan Camp was in a coma for nine days. Wow. His memories of his life before the assault have been virtually extinguished. Limitations of his health insurance prevented continued rehabilitation. Only three of his attackers went to prison, and all were released within two years. That's fucked up. They deserved way more than that. Oh, the the movie was originally going to be called The Women of Marwin. Interesting. Um... Oh, that's cool. When Mark lifts up the time machine and turns it on, you can hear the sound of the flux capacitor from the DeLorean of the Back to the Future trilogy. It's got, I mean, I figured that was a reference to it, right? It had to have been. But uh, I haven't actually seen those movies. It's another thing that's on my docket of something I need to do um, one of these days. So uh, so I didn't realize that, but that's that's really cool. Let 
Wow, really? That makes me so sad. A budget of 40 million, it debuted with 2.4 million in its opening weekend and made only 13 million worldwide. This is as of whenever this comment was made, you know, uh, making it one of the biggest box office failures of 2018. Man, it was such a good movie. Like, I really liked it. I Did people just not know about it? Or, I, I mean, maybe... Maybe people are like fucking Kurt, you know, and they, they saw the doll stuff and they were just like, what is this? You know, and, and it didn't catch their eye. I, I don't know. I felt like the trailer did a really good job to like really pull me into the idea of the story, you know, um, in the hobby store, when Mark checks out the miniature medals, the purple heart he buys has a reference label next to it reading, CRM-114. CRM-114 is a piece of radio equipment in Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. The code has been used by Kubrick and Ladder Films and other filmmakers as a tribute to him. Okay, interesting. Wilhelm Scream, yep. I caught that. Um... A bunch of interesting stuff in here. Oh, interesting. Diane Kruger, who I think... Is that the, the actress that played Deja? Also played a World War II spy in Inglorious Bastards. Neat. Okay. Oh, there's a there's a spoiler section of these. Um <clears throat> Sorry, I was trying to read some of these to see if they're like worth reading, but then they're kind of long. Um Okay, yeah. It's just another mention of the DeLorean being represented in the, the time machine. Uh, let's see here. Just basically a lot of people talking about the, uh, the reference to Back to the Future. Um... Uh, okay, so I it's been a long time since I've seen 40-year-old version. Uh, Leslie Mann, I think it's... I'm guessing it's Nicole. I think I remember her now. Is she the one that was... She was in 40-year-old version as well? Um, okay. Okay, so the real-life doll village is named Marwin Cole, a combination of Mark, Wendy, and Colleen. As the story develops, Mark gets a new neighbor, Nicole, whom he adds as a new character and eventually as part of the village's name. Okay. Colleen was also the name of the neighbor who moved away. So they did have the name in the movie. It just wasn't the same, the same character. Okay. So none of those facts were too crazy. Some of them were interesting. Um, uh, I guess maybe there wasn't, like, you know, it seems like the the fact that it wasn't a super box office hit kind of thing, I, I couldn't really find too much, like, you know, production info and, and stuff like that. It just might not have been widely praised enough to have, like, a lot of information about it be released, which... I wonder, like, for the people who did watch it, I wonder what, like, the, what the effect was. What did you guys think? Like, obviously, I imagine if you came and you watched a reaction of it, it means it's a movie that you enjoyed. So maybe that's a, that's a bad question to ask you guys at this point. But, but I am curious what, what you guys thought of this movie. Um, it, it's really too bad hearing that it didn't do, that it didn't do super great because, you know, it's just, 
it was such an impactful story to watch and witness and hear about and and i want more people to hear about mark's story and what he does and and everything so it's it's really too bad but you know maybe it's also one of those things where you know hopefully at least they made their money back because obviously these things make money over time too right like whenever they posted that thing about you know being like 2.4 million in the initial day or whatever the initial release and then 13 mil after it's very possible that there was a bunch more from rentals and licenses and you know however else they all make their money selling dvds and, and stuff like that but yeah like i'm straight up i'm gonna get this uh i have a tradition where i get my dad movies every christmas because he he loves to have dvds because he has a uh he has a tv with a dvd player on his boat so he loves to have dvds to watch stuff when he's on his boat and uh and they have one in his camper now too so when he takes trips in the camper he can he can watch movies so i i think i'm gonna get him this dvd i think he'd i think he'd like it so but uh but yeah at least i thought it was a great movie um fantastic it was very emotional very impactful um I, you know, that, that one fact hearing about how the assail only like three of the assailants, assailants went to jail and only for at most a couple of years is terrible. That's why I hate our legal system because, you know, the fact that they only got a couple of years for ruining someone's life like that kind of thing. And like I said, I don't like saying ruining his life because look at what he's made of his life, you know? um what he built like what happened to him is tragic and and should have never happened but he came out the other side of it you know and that's that's a big deal so um but yeah anyways guys that's gonna be it for me hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction hit that subscribe button if you did check out my patreon if you want to see more content from me you can see things like this early through the early access tier. I will be releasing this one, uh, obviously, by the time you're seeing it, it's too late now. But I do release stuff early on there through the early access tier. There's also shows on there that do not get released immediately. Uh, things like Better Call Saul I'm going through and uh, Simpo Gear, if you're into anime. Um, I'm going through those two shows on my Patreon right now. Uh, and then when they when I finish going through them, they will start being released onto YouTube. So check that stuff out if you're interested. And I will see you guys in my future reactions. Bye-bye.